Why do you need a target audience and how do you go about defining an accurate one? I used to believe that defining a target audience is a bit useless. I used to believe that if you could create a business, create a product or service and then throw it against the wall and whatever sticks to the wall would be whomever the target audience is and whomever the target segment of the population is worth going for because those are the people that love what you do. A kind of like the opposite way of, of approaching a target audience where you create something and then you figure out who's, who's it aimed for. Now, I see it instead of defining who your target audience is or what I call through research I've discovered is a customer persona. You define who they are and you understand everything. Everything, age, income, bracket, demeanor, how they would respond to certain emotions and ideas, things like that. You understand everything you can, firstly, from a hypothetical point of view, like at the very beginning, you just think this kind of people. You define who they are, and then you create products or services and solve their problems specifically. And this way, you have much more ideas about what you're going to create and much more ideas about who you're targeting. It's much more organized and efficient as opposed to just creating something and seeing who likes it. So what I discovered recently, back in uh, November, I spent around two weeks researching what is called uh, inbound marketing. And one thing I discovered was you got to define who your customer persona is. And when you define who your customer persona is by asking dozens and dozens of different questions and creating like a hypothetical character, a hypothetical persona who, whom is in the general public, once you create that kind of person, you can then create products for those kind of people. So let's say you've got a new business, and the new business is you know, selling clothes, for example. You can say, well, we're selling clothes that are suited for these kind of people, this and that, and this kind of people. And then you say, you, you break down the people that will love your product, people that will jump on the opportunity to first get onto your product, and you break it down to say, well, let's let's say you're selling you know, a women's uh, men's clothes store, online e-commerce. You then say, well, men who are active on sports or men who who go out, the great outdoorsmen kind of people, those kind of customer personas, and you break it down furthermore. So the guy who does sports every day, and you define things like what's their income, what's their age, what's their demeanor, what's their personality like, how would they respond negatively to content that is, you know, how would, uh, what kind of content would engage a positive response or a negative response or things like you know, what, what's their stance on sports and what kind of, of stuff will they buy uh, how can you create ideas for them how can you appeal to different kinds of emotions how can you create things that will spark their interest and spark them sharing your content or how could you create things that will solve their problem the more you can understand about this one specific type of audience that is perfect for your business the more stuff you can create and more stuff you can, more problems you can solve for them specifically. Also means that when you understand this type of audience, you have got load, you can create so many different ideas, and it's easier to get rid of ideas and not do things as opposed to not knowing what's going to work when you create it, as well as it's easier as opposed to not having enough ideas. And also, you want to do one extra step, but as well as defining who these people are, like the psychographics different kinds of demeanors and attitudes and opinions and thoughts, the different, so many different things. The more things you define and create, the more detailed your target audience will be and the more detailed and the more specific your content will be that will appeal to specifically them. They will love it. They won't just like it. They won't just think it's cool. They will love it. Um, uh, and also, as I said, it's, e it's easier to say you got too many ideas and then just cut back as opposed to not having enough ideas and also this is much more much more better than creating something and, and throwing it into the world and seeing who sticks you also want to create different or define different kinds of keywords that they will search for you know, on google or on youtube things like um, uh, search intent or branded keywords or um, uh, commercial investigation things like that different keywords that they will use and that you want to appeal to or create to or have a domination on certain kinds of keywords so let's say I have a branded keyword and it's on online men's clothes store UK 
you, for example, a branded keyword, define what your branded keywords are, especially long tail ones where there's not much search volume, but it's like, you know, fertile territory, fertile keywords to, to claim. Uh, so you have the keywords, so branded, say you've got branded keywords. So let's say you've got the branded keywords, you then want to position all your content around that branded keywords and include it and then define other keywords. So let's say uh, search intent, which is like to say um, <clears throat> type of clothing that works best in when playing squash. It's phrases where the searcher doesn't know what they're looking for, but when they see it, they'll know it. They, they will realize, that, ah, that's what I was after. Cl uh, men's clothes, best type of men's clothing that can be used in outdoor sports in the winter, stuff like that. And you define that and you create content around that specifically. And with and you, and you use inbound marketing strategies to create content all, on all these different keywords, on all these different ideas and different responses and different emotions and different uh, themes and demeanor. Then you create content with vi videos, blogs, infographics, books, things like that that appeal specifically to your target audience or your customer persona that answers their problem or highlights a problem that they will have. And then you educate them, you educate them and teach them. And then you say, well, here's how, here's the problem you've got. Here's how to solve it. And then you can either, here's how to do it yourself or for a chat, for a charge or a fee, we can do it for you. Here's the problem. Here's the stuff you'll need or the ingredients or the recipes, or here's the kind of clothing that's best suited, best suited for the outdoors. Here's where you can get it from either from us or a competition because you've got to also understand you've got to have a much bigger vision than just having just trying to find an income or just you know for the money as soon as you have a bigger purpose behind your vision you can then use that as a guiding principle for all your actions so then you then say I don't really care where you go but we do it as well we educate you we happen to sell our product do you want to buy some and then you can use it, and it, if there's enough point of calls, and if they interact with you enough hours and enough touch points, and you know, they, they read 11 blogs or spend 7 hours watching your content, then they're more likely to buy from you and see you as a trusted source and, and reputable and, and an authority as well. Because the more content that you create for these people specifically, the more likely they are to see you as an authority. The word author has got the word, um, the word authority has got the word author in it. So the more times they see you, more times they interact with you, because the more content you've got that's specifically tailored to them, the more likely they are to trust you. The more like, well, the more likely they are to know you, like you, and trust you. And when you, when they start doing that, they'll start to buy from you. Uh, without second guess or second thought, you know, as, as soon as you got content that they like and they consume, they will trust. They will see you and trust you. And when they trust your brand, because you know. They, men's clothes store outdoors clothes store uk they will see you and then soon you you'll have a defined audience and a defined market niche and then from there you can grow and expand you can find other products that are similar and overlapping you can define other custom personas different kinds of people you know people who want to go outdoors but don't really have the equipment to do it and then you can start you know solving their problems and teaching and educating them and then before you know you can pivot your business pivot 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 slightly the new kind of customer persona with similar products or overlapping kind of products and then before you know it you have got a really big complicated store that is appealing from the early in the early innovators and the early adopters the people who will jump straight to the opportunity to work with you because they share the same vision as you or they see the practicality of your product and before you know it, when you pivot and define new customer personas and find new products you can be able to go into the mainstream when you jump into the mainstream you've got the early majority you know the early majority of people and consumers in the general public because when you start off with one or two or five customer personas at the beginning you've got a tiny slither a more or less a monopoly on a few people it could be a few thousand or a few million people across the world that will love your product and then as you pivot and define and define other customer personas new kinds of people that will love your product or like your product as well, then you can start to shift from from an obscure anomaly that some people like, like a cult or a you know a, a really loyal fan base of a few thousand or a few million to mainstream. And this is a long, well, long-winded process that can take 
take years, maybe or even just a few months, depending on how, depending on fast and efficient, and, you know, how, depending on how you apply these principles. But the thing is, you want to define your target audience so you know specifically who you're aiming for in the crowded, noisy world. But I wrote a blog about this. Check out the blog below. If you haven't already, subscribe. There is so much more to come. And what do you think to this idea? And what kind of audience do you want to appeal to in your business? Who's the, who's the first kind of people you want to appeal to? Just to find who they are. Like I said, with the sports, you know, outdoor sports clothing store, I want to appeal to men who live in the UK that want to be great, that want to be great outdoorsmen. What kind of people do you want to appeal to? Comment below and learn and share ideas as well. See what happens and subscribe. Check out the blog and subscribe for more. More, more, there's more cool stuff on the way. How cool is that?